Hey everybody, welcome to the, I guess, first Streamlabs OBS tutorial that we are going to have. Um, this one's going to be about something that I ended up posting on Twitter and it gained a little bit of traction and so I want to do a follow-up for anyone who had questions on how I've achieved some of my overlays here on Streamlabs OBS, otherwise known as Slobs. So what we have open here is my Pokemon overlay for shiny hunting that I've just recently created. Um, as you can tell, it's using all, basically almost all of the stock pieces of uh, Streamlabs OBS, including the widget functionality here. Oh, hey, good morning. Um, let's just both do our best out there. Okay, good luck. Now, this is my older layout. If you want to start to use something that is newer or just uses more Streamlabs OBS integration, the best way to do that is just hop on over to the library. Um, you have these up here. This would be your dashboard, which I'm not going to show you guys my dashboard because that's a little weird. Uh, but then you have your library, your editor, etc. And really what you're looking for um, when you go to library, it takes a second to load up because these aren't locally cached. I don't believe these actually pull actively from the site. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but, but anyway. So you have a lot of options that you can select from here. You can do MMO styled. Um, layouts and stuff like that and you'll find that some of these are really subjective but you want to find something that you like so let's just go ahead and go I like that I like some of the animated ones so we'll do generic variety animated most installed mint dusk was the one I was previously using and that's the one that's most installed and uh, I'm, I'm gonna try something a little different um, so we'll do oh heck I don't know we can do cyan stitch. So we'll go ahead and use cyan stitch, which has quite quite a few um, installs. We'll just go ahead and install these for the sake of doing this tutorial for you guys here. So once installed, the installation is, is quick um, and it throws you right into it. Now, ideally, if I weren't already recording via my old OBS 64 bit, your camera would auto populate right here. Real nice and neat for you, but um, for this particular instance, it has not. Um, now, if you guys want to do what I have done and customize this just a little bit further, you can go ahead and put a, uh, a filter on basically anything. So uh, we'll get rid of the, the PUBG background if we want, maybe later here in a little bit. Um, you can go ahead and what I would do is let's find our webcam frame and let's go ahead and click on that and do filters. Now what I've done in the past is I've done uh, color correction here. Now, once you go ahead and select color collect correction, um, this is sort of up to you how you want to do it, but generally I will do a hue shift first to see what's possible. And you kind of get a wide breadth of colors, and it really just depends on what the preset color already starts out. Most stuff for Streamlabs, of course, starts with green. So there are a few things that are orange and, and whatnot. So you can kind of just tilt this and see really what you want out of it. And you can leave it pretty basic if you'd like. Now, if you want a little bit more, so say you like that, but you want it to be more, you can do this saturation out. Note the saturation is going to take out, you're going to lose some quality when you beef that saturation way up. Um, so a lot of people are wearing really bright reds and that works, but you, you lose a little quality. You can see some of the edging over here starts to get a little clippy and it doesn't quite work right. You can do it, but I, I really wouldn't recommend it right now. Um, you're going to have to unfortunately stick with some lighter pastels, etc. Um, but, but to each their own. You can kind of pick what you want out of there. The other alternative to getting uh, more vibrant colors, and I don't recommend this, but you can actually change the color here. Um, so when you go down, you can change to, well, almost anything. And you can do, so if you really want to do a red, you can do red and then turn the opacity down this way. Now, the problem with doing that is that's going to um, basically do a mask where everything is red. So anything that was white, like your symbols, well, that's not white anymore. So. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I, I don't recommend this method, generally speaking. Again, you can achieve certain effects out of it. I, I don't like it, but that is an option for you. You can do that with any color, despite the fact that this transparency bar is a little borked right now and it doesn't actually work very effectively. Um, so for instance, I can pick purple and it's, as you can tell, it's almost solid. If you take the transparency meter and turn it all the way down, you'll see the little meter that I'm dragging will shoot right back to the top, but it does have the same effect. So it, it's, it's weird. It is very weird how that works. You can achieve some interesting things by doing this. Um, it seems to stack in a very odd way as well. So um, yeah, that, that is an option for you. You can achieve a few different effects this way, but, uh, but ultimately there's just a lot of monkeying around that you can do with it to, to figure, 
figure out what's going on here. So you find a color you like, you enjoy that particular color. You can actually copy the filter that's on there by right clicking on the frame, copy filter. And then say we have, no, we don't need the stream labels. You have your alert box. So you can go up here to wherever that is. What is this? What is this considered? header there you go it's a header so we'll go ahead and paste the filter and voila you have your color um, and that'll help you determine what that color really looks like because that's more solid and you can go to your starting soon screen go to the overall start layer because the way these layers work you can paste your filter and change the entire thing here and then again you'll have to change the chat box frame paste your filter there so um, yeah so that is that is something that can be done that is something that can uh, exist and uh, you can change a lot of those now the one thing I've done to further um, change how some of my things look is to add a background image um, so if you would like to do that you can it'll take a little bit of tinkering but if you want to go to sources and hit plus and go to image and once you click that you'll be able to select your image now it'll give you everything that's already in use um, I personally would not do that. So I'm going to add a new source. It really, the image that you use is sort of up to you. Um, I'll use a Warframe image I've used in the past, which hopefully is in my images section and not lost somewhere on my computer. Uh, yeah. So we'll use this Nix prime image here and you can blow it up a little bit there. So, um, you'll generally kind of want this on top of everything. You want this to kind of be the top layer. You can, I mean, you can make it lower if you want, if you want to do any weird masking, but this is the uh, less heavy lifting option. So you'll want to go to uh, paste filters is generally what I do. That way you still get that color aesthetic you were looking for in the past. Personally, it's kind of a nice aesthetic. Uh, and then you can go ahead and add more filters. Um, and or realistically, you can add more filters if you want. I don't for this. I actually keep it with the color correction. And then you just turn the opacity down and really how far down you go is sort of up to you. Personally, I like to have it very, very faint because this is gonna overlap on your white stuff. So your names, your titles, things like that. And, and it gets a little, it gets a little murky. Um, it can look a little weird. So if you make it really faint, it's just something there. It's not too distracting. And voila, you have like almost a new aesthetic. On this particular overlay, the smoke from NYX almost looks kind of interesting. Um, and again, you can remask that stuff if you want, but I, I personally wouldn't recommend it. So yeah, for those of you that were looking at maybe how, um, we achieved some of those things, uh, I hope the tutorial was overall helpful. Um, like I said, our, our start soon, or I'll be right back, utilize, um, very similar techniques as you can tell here. Uh, it just depends on the layout, what you like, what's sleek and what isn't. Um, but yeah, if you guys like any more tutorials, anything else for Streamlabs OBS, uh, let us know. Uh, hopefully this was quick and simple for you guys and hopefully I was clear and concise, but otherwise happy streaming guys. And we'll see you out there on Twitch.